hips. Sounds that simple. This is why I can tell Dan's a proper golf coach, because I thought he might just say, turn your hips more or something. But he's actually got like a proper like form. Is that the six points anyway? your take on so douglas has asked us and i don't know if you can answer this but i think you'll do magic something up what's the easiest fix for more distance so we hear now and someone else can chat about so much about this whole distance debate people need to hit it far and that's it's more important to hit it long than it's straight and the bryson story etc so well it's two questions actually how important is distance in this modern game for the average golfer let's say because that's who's listening to this podcast really and also how can people hit it further without even seeing you what's a magic trick you could give them if you can so in terms of how important is it long massive now but that you know i was talking to you last week mm-hmm. when we we're going around and i see it as there's actually a formula to hitting it long now there's about six different components that you can put in and you can figure out which, which is right for the person and you can quite quickly gain you know really really great distance up i mean you look at bryson and it's been the fact that he's using force plates and they've used some biomechanics and they've had a few other people in and basically they've used a science approach to get him to the ball further and protein shakes shed loads of them (laughs) (laughs) and um you know in terms of when you look at it you'd say well you've got making the stance wider so making him stance wider actually like, helps you to create more torques, a bit more turn. So, so again, summarise it, wider than shoulders. Wider than shoulders, yeah. Okay. Then there's a thing called a counter move that you see Bryson do. Matt Wolf does it a little bit. Well, he does it a lot, actually, where they push into the front foot to then move over to the right foot. So what happens is that if you saw any other athletic sport, if you saw American football running backs or um, football, you know, Premier League, someone wants to go round a player. If they wanted to move left, they push off the right foot mm-hmm. to move to the left quickly. So it's the same principle. It accelerates the first move back quickly. And then as you do that, if you take the club back as quickly as you possibly can, what happens is, from a technical standpoint, as you get it to that top of the backswing, as you go and change direction, you're putting more force through the handle. So because you're putting more force through the handle, you have to do that to slow the club down, which increases the power that you're going to put down the hand path into the ball. So they don't need to know what it's all doing, but that's the technical reason why they're doing it. So if they speed up the backswing, they're going to hit it further. Wider stands create a bit more torque. Counter move is going to help create that speed. The other one would be... Let me summarise counter move a little bit better. Just so, so what you're saying is once you set up to the golf ball, you'd almost slightly either push into your left foot if you're right on the golfer and then pull back. Yeah. Or do you mean more like like sway to the left as you pull back? Nope. Just summarise that a bit. So you imagine that you've almost got like... Uh, half a tennis ball underneath the front of your left foot or or it's like an accelerator pedal pushing down into the front of the left foot as you move across so you're trying to think is there any other sports that really like say you probably tennis serving Mm -hmm. they lean onto the front they they lean onto the front foot and then tilt back with the upper body okay yeah makes sense okay and then actually the same thing that they would then do is um, the they let the left well, let the left heel lift in the golf swing at the top of the back swing if you've not got enough flexibility. What that does is that creates a bit of what's called unweighting, which is people talk about vertical force quite a lot. It means that you can create a lot, lot more of that. So those four bits in back swing are absolutely massive for power. Wider stance, push from your left foot before pulling the club back. Yeah. Pull the club back, swing back as fast as you can. Fast as you can. And lift the left heel up at the top of the back swing to yep. help you get more That last rotation. one looks horrendous in my opinion. Though, yeah, the left. I, I know it's a bit I'm of an old school fan. move, but it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. No. But left heel to help you get more rotation as well as vertical force. Can do, yeah. Or just mainly more for vertical force. More, more, actually a bit more rotation coupled in with it, yeah. And when you're talking about vertical force, you're talking about coming down in the golf swing now. Yeah. You, you hammer that left heel down into the ground as then everything synchronizes back well, on the way down. What actually you're doing is you're going into the front of the left foot with the vertical force. So you're going right into the very, very front of that foot. And the bit that is, it's actually dead easy when you get your head around it. But wherever you put the force, you move in the opposite direction. Okay. So, so if you want to open up more, push into the front of the left foot more. Because there's only so far forward you can go into the front of that left foot. Conversely, you'd pull into the back of the right foot. You'll have seen on Instagram, you know, the guy who hits the golf shot on the ice and falls through the ice. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, he hits about six inches behind it, falls through the ice. Yeah, okay. Okay, when when you watch it, what happens is when he starts the downswing, his front foot slides towards the ball. His right foot pulls backwards, and that's actually what's creating the rotation. But because there's no friction because he's on ice, he falls over and it's the ice and falls into it. 
So that movement that he actually makes, I've got that on my te- in my teaching software, which I'll occasionally use to demonstrate how the forces are working. So if you then pull into the back of the right foot, push into the front of the left foot, you're actually then more on top of the golf ball. And then the reaction from that is right foot rolls over, left foot jumps backwards. The vertical force you've pushed down with takes you upwards. And that's how they absolutely smash it. And it's that. And then it's getting the combination of all those bits. Sounds that simple. This is why I can tell Dan's a proper golf coach because I thought he might just say, turn your hips more or something. But he's actually got like a proper like form. Is that the six points then or is there anything else? Yeah, the downswing is where the weight's five. Five, so it would be how that is created in the downswing. So the big one is in that downswing, as you're pushing forwards, if you can keep your upper shoulders back, so imagine you split your torso into three sections. So you've got lower body up to pelvis, pelvis up to your sternum, breastbone, Mm -hmm. and then breastbone above. Well, the body's really good at separating from the breastbone. So what you do is if you separate from there and keep the left arm keep the shoulders back the left arm tightens against the ribs and actually creates almost a little bit of extra coil and that's then huge for getting the extra power is this what they always talked about with like rory having like this double hip turn and all this and yeah you know he separates his, his lower body and his upper body stays a little bit more closed yeah helps you also hit more on the inside helps you hit more on the way up as well which is much more good for uh, obviously more beneficial for deliverable numbers with your driver yeah sweet was that six I think we got those, didn't we? That was good. I'm gonna ask-